Maybe far from home, but it's pretty close to the chest. Ooh, that's a hot mug, guy. Hey guys, this is my review for Spider-Man Far From Home. Holy shit, I actually saw this around the time of when it came out. I just got back from Mexico. I do have a lot of footage and photos to show, but that's gonna take some time because I did it over four different media platforms like an idiot, so. And on top of that, I have a lot of clients that I have to finish too before I go off to Quebec this Saturday, so you might not see it for a while, but you will eventually see it. Spider-Man Far From Home is actually pretty decent. I enjoyed this movie, and the one thing I wanna say right off the bat is it got the humor down well, to the point where I was almost laughing every minute of the movie. And something that I really, really wanna stress here, this movie, has the consistency of humor that the Ant-Man movies have tried and failed, especially the last one, to have in both of their films. The humor in this film is just so good. It's really witty. It's also not taking itself seriously. It's pointing out the inconsistencies, the stereotypes, and the conundrums of superhero movies while at the same time being a superhero movie itself. Tom Holland, once again, really, really shows off that he actually is pretty much the best Spider-Man. And with his friends, they actually really try to make an effort of having them be a part of the story, whether through comedy or actually a related to the events that are happening. And Jake Gyllenhaal as Mysterio is, is a little disappointing. Mainly because he plays out exactly how I thought he was gonna play out. Now what Homecoming showed to me is that they were taking the characters and the stereotypes and the tropes of Spider-Man lore and flipping them on their head. They were changing characters around. MJ was not the ditzy redhead that she was. She was actually a pretty good individual with some dark humor. Flash wasn't this big jocked up douchebag. He actually was a tiny little asshole, but respected Spider-Man. And Peter Parker was actually a 16 year old instead of Tobey Maguire's 30 old teenager. And then the Vulture kind of had a little bit of a twist on him. Admittedly, they didn't really take it very far. All they said is that he had to keep making money. And Jake Gyllenhaal as Mysterio, he's Mysterio. For those of you who have read the comics or watched the shows, any other interpretation of him, he's Mysterio, except flashier. And this whole movie tries to play itself out like a road trip film. And you could say that, except if you didn't see all of the horrible green screen. I'm amazed at how much bad green screen there is in this movie, considering it's a Marvel movie and it's got that Disney money. There are some shots that obviously had to be faked because of location and just it was so much simpler to do it that way. For instance, the scene where Nick Fury is in that room with Peter Parker and he tranks his friend, he wasn't even in the same room as him. He actually was in a studio, and the gun isn't even all real. But then we go to other places, like when they're on the boat, or when they're on the bridge, and it just looks so goddamn fake. That's honestly my biggest complaint about the movie, because otherwise it's a very serviceable film. I did enjoy the aspects of Mysterio and his whole arc into this movie. It's really hard not to talk about him without spoiling it. It's not so much him that's interesting, it's what he brings with his character that's interesting. And I did enjoy the visual elements with him, him in Spider-Man in particular. Once you see the actual implications of everything that's going on, you're kind of sitting there going, how? But they get away with this because of what has been already established in this series. We saw Tony Stark have a nanotech suit. We saw aliens literally almost blow up the world and flash half of all life into existence. So anything is pretty much go now. They've gotten to that point where they are literally representing the comics. It's no longer a realistic or a somewhat pseudo real version of this world into a comic book world. It's totally comic book world now. So the movie is enjoyable. It does have a great cast. It does have great humor. Uh, the villain aspect as well as the story is a bit predictable because like I said, just watching the trailer, I was like, all right, this is when this is going to happen. And I was dead on right. It's a little bit unfortunate because I was hoping a little bit more from this character. But in the end, I feel it's exactly like Homecoming, where the villain character has the potential to be something much more grandiose, especially if they follow the whole idea of turning all the different characters and tropes on their heads. But instead, they just kind of take this one little thing and then they don't do anything else with it. Also, on the other side that no one else seems to be talking about, this is Iron Man 3. 
Like, almost to a T, this is Iron Man 3. Peter has a episode at the very beginning of the movie, basically a PTSD attack, just like Tony did. The villainary aspects of this film reflect exactly the same ideologies, cause and effect of that of Iron Man 3. And the ending is almost identical to how Iron Man 3 works out, except maybe you just turn it around. The, the villain has the aspect that Tony had in Iron Man 3. So I did enjoy Spider-Man Far From Home. Don't get me wrong there. It's a very enjoyable movie. It does heavily borrow from Iron Man 3, but it does have enough of a standing to work on its own. I just thought that there was going to be a few different things with Mysterio as well as the whole villain aspect of this film. Either way, I'm going to give Spider-Man Far From Home a 5 out of 7. I did enjoy it and I was happy to see this movie originally I'd said I wouldn't see any more spider-man movies but someone told me to watch it and then watch the mid-credit sequence half of it doesn't make any fucking sense it is so easy to poke a giant hole in what they try to implicate however the person doing the implicating that made me go Woo! Otherwise, guys, that's all from me. I hope you enjoyed this review. If you did, leave a like, and if you're interested in more, maybe subscribe. Anyways, I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching the video. It's been a while, but I'm happy to say the click is finally getting back together in an all-new movie, thanks to a successful Kickstarter campaign. But we are still asking for your support. You know, Nitz, you can't get more money unless you offer questionable favors. Yeah, guy. Unless, of course, those favors involve the ladies, guy. <laughs> By support, I mean getting the word out, guys. Oh, well... Couldn't you find a better means than this guy? All he seems to talk about is supernatural. Or hold a coffee mug real awkward. Why didn't you ask a Kardashian or something? Yeah, guy. Get in with the ladies, guy. Hey, he's trying to help out. Like you've been trying with Kimmy Burton? I've seen Jabba the Hutt finish a marathon faster. Yeah, guy. You're a massive slug thing, guy. <sighs> to see any and all updates about the upcoming Undergrads movie, be sure to check out and like the Bring Back Undergrads Facebook page. And with any luck, we'll see you guys soon.